something that has come up in a couple of instances is the relationship of mindfulness to religion and if there's any conflict <clears throat> and so I wanted to share my thoughts on the matter uh, my upbringing is from um, the Christian faith um, the stories that are um, known to me and, and that I've known since I was little are the stories of, of Jesus and the disciples and Mary, um, the story of Abraham, uh, the story of Noah, the story of Moses, um, Pontius Pilate. These are, these are the stories that have been fundamental to my life. And... I, I mean, I always, I, I knew about them intellectually, but it wasn't until my mindfulness practice that I, that I kind of recognized what makes them so fundamental and so valuable uh, to just life itself, right? So, so over the past week or so, I've experienced a lot of heaviness, a lot of stress, not like just typical stress, but identified with stress. So stress that, you know, really cut me deep. <laughs> and it was heavy. It was just a heavy feeling. Like I remember in, in kind of some of the the yuckier moments of the past week feeling a lot of empathy for what I imagined my mom was, must have felt like while I was in Iraq. Right, like th just this feeling of like constant dread or worry or fear, and so like, like that's how deep I was in it. Right now, in the old days before mindfulness, being inside of a space like that was real tricky because I would become very, very, very self-identified with things not going the way I'd want them to or whatever feelings were being expressed in my body and I would uh, lose a lot of time and a lot of energy feeling like I was a bad person feeling shame um, really just in it right and and had nothing no way to do anything about it just kind of in it well now I've got these tools and most of the time during regular life experience 99% of the time um, when kind of shadow or uncomfortable experience shows up in the body I have the tools and the resources to deploy the right techniques and mitigate their influence and um, so it's been it's been much different now that said there's still been times there have still been times and I've, I've noticed this where it doesn't matter um, I'll, I'll be able to deploy any technique I can think of and I can create respites but I the 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 uncomfortableness the shadow the weight the kind of the lull in the rhythm remains and it's just a constant thing. Like I imagine what it would, must have been like for my mom while I was in Iraq. Just this constant presence of this weight, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, coming back to how my, my Christian upbringing has played a, a really positive role is inside this, this feeling of these, these past couple weeks, inside this heaviness, um, I really found solace in stories like the story of Abraham where God tells Abraham to take his son to the top of this mountain and kill his son and Abraham says all right and he's about to do it fully into it, about to kill his son and God says I had to test your faith and so the experience of that story during these feelings of heaviness and 
weightedness, stress, shadow, whatever, that story really played a positive role in my relationship to the feeling. My relationship to the feeling, and that's that's what mindfulness is. And Dr. John Kabat-Zinn will tell you, mindfulness is a new kind of relationality to things. So, my relationship to suffering in the past was one of I'm wrong. Da 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 da. da. My relationship to the now, my relationality to this so-called suffering shadow, whatever you want to call it, is one that's reinforced by my faith and so it's as though my mindfulness practice has helped me embody what intellectually I've known since I was a kid but now because I have this awareness of the fullness of what I am and in the armor down language you look at it from the perspective of mind body and spirit or the mystery for the most the most unloaded but it closely accurate word you can think of and so because of the practice uh, the practice not it's not some intellectual construct here. The, the practice affords me awareness of these spaces. And, you know, you can kind of be intellectually spiritual, but in the moment, in the moment of suffering and, and having faith, it's a, it, is a, it is an embodied experience to be inside of suffering and remember that there were moments, stories that have been passed down for thousands of years that embody a similar kind of moment of not knowing, of uncertainty, of fear, of doubt, of worry. And to be able to call upon that in this moment and recognize, embody, feel, be aware of its influence in a way that is practiced, in a way that is familiar, is to really see, I think, the practice of the faith itself. And so I am indebted to the practice of mindfulness for bringing out a whole new awareness surrounding the faith, its stories, and, and the, the actual practical, tactical, in the moment of uh, value of the deployment of those stories and and what they pass on so you know I'm I'm a I'm an eternal optimist so you can you can definitely fault me on that but um, I I really feel like my my relationship to God and Jesus and Christianity has been enhanced by mindfulness so um, take it for what you will. It's what I offer to you. Um, thanks for uh, paying attention.